jam! Hello again and welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Monday Night Magic here on the MTG Cast Network. I am Chewy, and uh You know I have nothing clever for and. I just I am Chewy. Alright. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Noun and verb. And adjective. I don't I think I think one of those is inaccurate. That is probably true. Anyway, so uh, joining me is everyone's favorite goblin that doesn't understand grammar, Squee. It's very unfortunate that my job involves understanding grammar a lot of the time. <laughs> but in my defense, I've been sick since it was snowing, so bleh. I'm still a one-half, one-half, so I trade with a little girl. Bleh. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound right at all. And also, No, it's miserable. Don't do it. And also... <laughs> Clues is here, hopefully without any references to little girls. I also don't stand under a grammar something. Oh, yeah. What? That up. <laughs> Parts of speech are rough, man. They really are. Are they? So, oh. Did you just participle wrong? Maybe. Was it dangling? You picked it up for someone trips I'd, over it. I'd rather not say. Fair enough. So, hello everyone. We we aren't right. Two thirds no. of us uh, super bold. Yep, that's yesterday, right. Yesterday, so we're we're enjoying the uh, the sweet taste of New England fans' tears, or at least I am. I have no dog in that fight. I just I just enjoy when. Just kidding. I'm a Tide commercial. <laughs> ah. <laughs> also that. I just enjoy it when when f the the Patriots lose because Patriots fans are the worst losers. So it it warms my heart. Whereas Philadelphia fans just riot when they win. I mean, they'd have rioted if they lost too, so it was fun. As long as they're rioting and looting for a good cause. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> ah, topical humor. So, speaking of topical humor, Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan happened this weekend. It sure did. It. <laughs> I, I didn't have a follow up for that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm agreeing. I'm here with you. I I support this change of topic away from. Who's this, this providing support? I am. Uh, so it was it was I the am. modern pro tour, which the last time there was a modern pro tour was a nightmare. But that's because Eldrazi. Yeah, I mean they are scary creatures, and they also completely ruined the format for that period of time, thanks to. Uh, Ayavugin and the other one. A, a lot of things happening together. But it was mainly those two lands, but I legitimately can't remember the name of the one that didn't get banned. Why is that? And you guys clearly can't either, so. Yeah, well, you're right, I, I cannot. It's bugging me that I can't. Because my brain keeps going, it's Eldrazi Monument. I'm like, no, it's not. That's a different thing. Why do you keep thinking Eldrazi Monument? Yeah, that's the one. No. That that's not a land. One. It's an artifact. Yeah. Well, we uh, are It's sad worst. how bad we are today. At least I'm sick. I'm going to claim that I am also sick. Uh, was it Eldrazi Temple? That's the one. Go team. Yay. Right, and it was the eye that got, that got banned yes. in modern, right? Yes, Eye of Ugin, banned. Well, you saved me a joke at the end of the show. Woo! What was the joke? You'll find out when we get to the end of the show. Still All right. Do. I'm going to make a note here. The show is over. Okay, then. Yep. All right. I've written it down. It must be true. I'm pretty yep. sure that's how that works. Hey, uh, listen, I know we're going to get into uh, some of these decks and the metagame and uh, all the not the other the more different nonsense but if social media is to be believed there were like tons of people who i'm gonna say quote unquote tuned in to watch coverage of this is is that is that true uh we do not actually measure viewership by weight now okay excellent or by mass or by speed it, do we do it by density what was the density of viewers? That could be. That might become a very big number then. At any rate, my point was, I've heard that it was a very popular um, pro tour to watch. 
Um, I did not have a chance to tune in myself, but uh, I hear lots of folks did. If that's the case, that's great. I'm I'm glad people are enjoying watching the format. I heard, I also heard again on the social medias. I cannot prove what I'm about to say that the folks who did turn in to turn in the folks who did tune in uh, found the coverage to be pretty good. You know, oftentimes they just complain about coverage, but I've heard some good things on the social medias. Well, that's good. Again, can't prove it, but it's what I heard. Fair enough. And I'm passing it along because apparently things that get posted on social media are technically news. Sure. But yeah, it does not surprise me that this had a higher viewership than, let's say, the last Pro Tour. Because the last Pro Tour was standard, and standard recently has been kind of not great. Whereas this was modern... And modern here lately has been great as far as yep. diversity of decks and things of that nature. Like there's nothing oppressive holding down the format like there was in the last modern pro tour and modern yeah. as a format has come a long way since then. So yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. So uh, Luis Salvato won the whole thing. Just the whole, the whole shebang, as the kids say, playing Lantern Control, which apparently is the, is a boogeyman of the format, judging again by the social medias. Yeah. So Lantern Control yeah. won, and also, I think part of this might be because Lantern Control won, which means that the second place player, Jerry Thompson, who everyone loves, did not win, and he was... At least, again, according to my social medias, everyone was like, oh my god, Jerry T is brilliant. This is going to be great. This is amazing. And then he lost, and suddenly people are calling for the banning of Lantern Control. I'm wondering if, you know, Jerry T not winning is some small percentage of that. Because hmm. it's not like Lantern Control is a new deck. <clears throat> and it's not like... Well, clearly, if people are calling for it to be banned, that means that it was like 30% of the format, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously. I mean, yeah. otherwise otherwise people would not have out the pitchforks, right? Yeah, okay, well, like, hang on. Clearly, let's, let's go Lantern to the, Control must be oppressive. It must be. Let's go to the day one metagame breakdown by Frank Karsten. All right. And see where, okay, nope, nope. Five Lantern. Color Humans was first with 9.3% of the field. 9.3%. That's a lot in a diverse meta. Yeah, I was going to say, hold on there. You're telling me that it, like the the most played deck was still less than 10% of the meta. Mm, apparently, yeah. Okay. Okay, so hang on. Uh, Affinity was 8%. No Burn, no Tron, no Moving. Ooh, Storm was 5%. Okay, hang on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Found it. Lantern Control. Nine players. Wait, not nine percent. Not nine percent. Like just nine. Nine players. players. One point nine percent of the less than two percent of the field. So out out of the four hundred and sixty four players, nine played Lantern Control. Okay, wait, wait. Maybe it's got to do with conversion rate. Let's go to the day two meta game yeah. breakdown by Frank right. Carson. Here it is, Lantern Control. Uh, day one, nine players. Day two, six players. Nope, only only two thirds of them made it in. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, two thirds, you say? Well, that is damn near half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <coughs> there are also two ad nauseum decks, both of which made it to day two. Two Ironworks combo decks, both of which made it to day two. Of the Gift Storm decks, there were 56.5% conversion rate to day two, which which is damn near half. Like, I don't understand. Now, clearly we're poking fun at this, but lots yeah, of yeah. people have been baying for something to be banned from Lantern Control. Stop the top! And most of the reasoning that I'm hearing behind this is because it's lame. Like, it's no fun to play, it's no fun to play against... Like, clearly, Which... clearly, according to Eric Froelich, clearly the obvious reason that only nine people brought it 
is because it sucks so hard to play with and against. Not because, you know, modern is massively diverse with Wouldn't actually deck dozens that, of decks. Wouldn't a deck that's hard to play and hard to defeat be the ideal best deck for a very competitive group of specialized magic players? Uh, apparently, unless it it's a prison deck. Apparently, that's not allowed. Oh, because generally speaking, when you bring in the horse that no one can tame, all the, you know, badasses in the room want to tame it. And that's not the case here. So maybe everyone's just exaggerating a lot. That could be. Because yeah. if you tell me that a deck is hard to beat, and if I'm good enough, I can win a pro tour with it. I would like to think that if I were going to put in all the work and energy that people do to become pro players, that I would want to be good with that deck and maybe play it. But if only, like, nine people show up with it, don't think it's that. <laughs> Look, don't get me wrong. If the line that we want to draw in the sand is that we hate prison decks, I might be able to get on board with that. But I'm going to need for us to go ahead and be honest about that. I don't think that the argument of it's not fun to play against can apply to a game where control is an archetype, where prison decks have been a thing since very early on, and where they're going to continue to print cards that say, no, you can't do that. Yeah, Legacy Stacks would like to have a word with everyone. <laughs> yeah, but no one's there to talk to it. Oh, yeah, hmm. No, no, they're not, because they rage quit. So, I mean, it's a deck that's built around... Artifacts. Heaven forbid anyone put some artifact hate in their sideboard. Well, look, Chewy, uh, Watsy has never printed any artifact hate. It's oh, clear. Right. It's absolutely clear that they just love artifacts yeah. completely. They're like There's emblems. No There's no way yeah. to interact with them whatsoever. Yeah. No way to interact with them. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, looking at Lantern for the... I, we are poorly equipped to explain to everyone exactly how these decks work, but basically Lantern Control is going to continually look at the top card of your deck and decide whether you get to have it or not. Yes. And, it's like playing uh, against the best Jace. That sounds really freaking miserable. Yeah. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, which it is. I mean, sure, your opponent's deck is saying you don't get these cards from your hand because it's running, you know, Inquisition, Thought Seize, all that fun stuff. And you don't get to draw these other cards. Sounds awful. Sounds absolutely terrible. But it can't stop you from drawing cards. So you're eventually going to draw something that's going to get through and you're going to resolve this problem. And most of their deck is designed to not let you do that and it failed. So why aren't you beating them? <laughs> and I know this is a gross oversimplification for someone who doesn't play the format, but... That might be an incredibly effective thing to do, but we run into this all the time in every format. There's always a control deck or a prison deck. Which, the hey. The game has been around for 25 years. We found ways to beat these before. If the line that we want to draw in the sand is that control isn't fun and you shouldn't play it, I've been saying that for years. <laughs> but thank you, Hipster Clues. You're welcome. Um, But regardless, this sounds like it's a bunch of people that are essentially reacting negatively to something that feels bad without any real regard for the fact that it's really just the deck that they don't want to play. And play I do against. feel for them, but I don't think we should expect Watsy to ban it simply because it's not fun. It's not really oppressive at this point. I mean, don't get me wrong. If everyone takes, if their takeaway message from this is, Hey, if I want to win in modern, I've got to play Lantern Control. And like the next time we see a modern event it is nothing but Lantern Control as far as the eye can see. Yeah, okay, sure. But at this point, look, there are tons of decks here. I mean, we haven't even gone through the whole top eight yet, but I believe there are eight different archetypes in top eight. There are seven. There are seven. Seven. Oh, there are seven. Oh, God. It and here's impressive. a hint. Lantern Control is not one of the other ones. So, like, it is not the do doubled up one. Like, if this thing is so miserable to play against, then it's never, or so miserable to play with, it's never going to take over the whole format. So I'm not worried about it. Yep, neither am I. Okay, wait a minute, hang on. I am checking the uh, 18 to 20 point, okay, land turn. Okay, so in the 18 to 20 point 
decks, 20 points is 6, 2, and 2. There's one Lantern Control. There's another one way down here somewhere. I'd have to scroll up to figure out where that one fell, though. So give me a second. Well, you know what? It's close enough to the bottom. It's probably... Wait, no, that's Lantern Scout. Yeah, here it is. Okay, Lantern Control. So this one is close enough to the bottom that it is the 18-point deck list. So there's two. So one, one, okay, wait. So that, that's two from 18 to 20. If we control F the word lantern here, oh, for God's sake. Oh, there aren't any in the 23, the 21 to 23 point list. There just aren't any. Okay. What if we check the 24 to 26 point and the 27 to, why are these separated so much? Jesus, just give us some well, to click on. Got to keep it separated. <laughs> Control F Lantern. Okay. Oh, Brian Brondewin was running one. And he finished at eight and two in the modern constructed. Oh, there's another one further down. Oh, this is Luis Salvato. Oh, look at that. He's not even in the, the highest bracket. And then in 27 or 28, Traverse Shadow, White Blue Control, Eldrazi, Tron, Mardu, Pyromancer. Yeah. So, as we have demonstrated by repeatedly attacking this dead horse... It's fine. It's fine. Just calm down. Everything Wait a little bit. is fine. Like, the 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 reason I think that people are, are saying this is because it's slow and grindy, and it doesn't win by either burning you to the face or punching you with creatures. And the the I've seen two common comparisons. Eggs, not the same thing. Do you remember the eggs deck, you guys? Oh, yeah. Like, it won with this bizarre, like, open-ended combo that wasn't... That has yet to resolve to this day. Exactly. It wasn't <laughs> It wasn't really a combo in that it was guaranteed to work. You just had to sit there and monster through it and hope it worked. As Brian Kibler pointed out one time, can I go to the bathroom while my opponent attempts to go off? Like, so this is not the same thing. You couldn't win with it in Magic Online because there's a chess clock. Yeah. That, that was sort of the takeaway. You could play it in real life when you and your opponent do not actually have equal time. You could not play it in Magic Online. And the other thing that I've seen people point out is Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah, stop the top. Well, shut up, Clues. You're you're going to muddy the issue with that. <laughs> just crap. Okay, I'll so, just mute myself. Top was, was banned in Legacy because it was stop. enabling a deck that was actually oppressive and destroying the format, right? Yep. Okay, now, it was put on the modern ban list a long time ago, and the reason they gave was because it caused games to, to slow to a crawl, and, like, it was causing too many tournaments, to, or too many rounds to go past time and stuff like that, if I remember correctly, right? That was one of the arguments. Yep. Okay, so that's, that's the best actual point of contention here, is that, sure, this game is long and slow and grindy, but, like... If if the game is long and slow and grindy, and you're like, well, I'm just going to lose, then concede and go to game two. <laughs> well, also, in the case of this one, okay, you didn't get the card you wanted. Guess you have to pass. You're going to get to five turns, and you're going to be over. It's not like you're going to be stuck in the last turn for half an hour. Like, that's not what happens. This is a denial deck. It's not a, I'm going to spend forever to slowly ping you to death deck. Yeah. So, so yeah. it, it's it's the nature of the deck. It's not a single card put in every deck that causes everything to go long. Because you could drop Sensei's Divining Top in any deck and use it every turn to increase, you know, the quality of your draws. Sure. But that's adding that particular card for that particular thing to any deck. This is what the the entire deck is designed to do, and it's up to you as an opponent to either realize when you can't win or, like, have strong outs or something. And if you realize that you can't win, it's not like, well, I'll show them and make them grind me out, because that's what they want to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway. So, hey, what about uh, the yeah, let's, third place Let's talk deck. about the, the rest of this, shall we? I'm just... For everyone who's baying for a banning of cards from Lantern Control, shut up. Slow right? down. Just That's slow what I'm going to say. Yeah. 
It's okay to admit when you're wrong, and if it turns out things from this get banned and there's a reasonable argument from Watsy, it won't, then I will gladly admit that I'm wrong. I've done it many, many times. I do it all the time. There's no shame in admitting you're wrong. And as it stands right now, as of this recording, all of you are wrong, and it's okay. Just admit it and move on and try to learn from this experience. Now. Or don't admit it and move on. Just move on. Just move on. Yeah. Just shut up about it. <laughs> So yeah, Jared T was in second place playing a Mardu Pyromancer deck, which I'm sure uh, makes Clues happy. Uh, yes. Yes, it does. And and why does it Whoa, make Whoa, dude. Happy? What? Well, because young people Look at that. He's running Coligan's Command. You know what that can do? Destroy target artifact. target artifact. <laughs> Guys, we broke the meta. Oh my god, we've got it figured <laughs> out. I don't even care that he lost. He had the technology. So... <laughs> But yeah, Jerry T's running four Young Pyromancers and four Bedlam Reveler, and then just lots of controly things and burn and, you know, spells. I think I know why he didn't take the top spot. Why? Not enough burn. Yeah, he's got four Lightning Bolts. Oh, and Coligon's Command. Three of those. Uh. Oh, oh, Collective Brutality. That's that's got uh, that's got some burn in it. Yeah, that's it, though. There's, yeah. a, there's your problem. There's your problem. Needed more. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, also, don't take deck advice from me in Modern, because I don't know what I'm doing. That's also true. Yeah. But it is good to see Bedlam Reveler, that card that we all looked at and was like, yeah, actually, you know, wrecking things. It's nice. Uh, in third place, Pascal Viren is running a blue-red Pyromancer deck. Young peasy. Complete with three copies of Thing in the Ice because comedy, and also because not sure that, how I feel about that though. Wait, say that again. Not sure how I feel about that though. I mean, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, it is a thing. It, it I turns... like to think that Young Pyromancer can hide behind it and then use the frozen blue creature, you know, to its own devices. But then it 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 turns into the woke horror. You know, it's, yeah. it's so woke. I mean, sure. Sure. So, yeah, that's fun. Uh, Ken Yukihiro in, where is this? Fourth place is running this Black Red Hollow One deck that blew me away uh, a couple weeks ago. Hey, the Banana Man's in here. Yeah, also clues you're roboting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let me see if I can do something about that. So it's running, obviously, the Hollow One. And then things that make you discard cards, like Burning Inquiry, and uh, Collective Brutality, and Faithless Looting, and Goblin Lore. Wow, Goblin Lore. And then Bloodgast, Flameblade Adept, Flamewake Phoenix, Gurmag Angler, because Zombiefish. Uh, the fish, Hollow fish. One, fish, fish, the Hollow One, Street Wraith, and of course, Tassiger, the Golden Banana Man. Oh, and four Lightning Bolts, just to make clues happy. Yay! So yeah, this is actually a different take on uh, the Hollow One deck. I think what the one that I saw before was a green-red version, and none of those actually made the cut to Day 2. I think there was only one, and it didn't make the cut to Day 2, but the black-red ones did, and this looks amazing. Because, you know, it is. Anyway. Where would the green be in this? It was using, uh, I think it was uh, green red. So instead of Gurmag Angler, the five five with Delve, it had the uh, the freaking the gorillas, the monkeys. Yeah, but like, why specifically does this one have stomping ground in it? Stomping ground, because of oh, ancient grudge in the board. Oh, that's what I missed. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, what does ancient grudge do? Uh, flashback. Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Destroys artifacts. Anyway, um And then it does it again with that green we just talked about. What? It's crazy. Alright, so then in fifth place, uh Javier Dominguez was running the five color Humans deck. Huma. Uh, that we have been seeing for a little while now. Which is pretty pretty funny. Uh Reed Duke is in sixth place running Abzan. Just good old, good old Abzan. It's just, here, here are these three colors. Just go pick a bunch of cards you like. 
Oddly enough, he's not running Siege Rhino, which is probably why he didn't finish first. That was an Abzan joke, not an actual modern. Yeah, that would have been a curved topper. Yeah, this is like fast Abzan. You were correct. What is that? Oh, it's it's the Masterpiece Maelstrom Pulse. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, AutoCard. I appreciate it. I really dislike that. But anyway, uh, uh, Jean-Emmanuel Depraz was running Traverse Shadow, which is a uh, an Abzan colored, oddly enough. No, wait. <clears throat> There's Team or Battle Rage. Traverse Shadow sounds like a Kingdom Hearts fanfic. So it, it, uh, it was it was developed in Traverse City, Michigan. That is, is not a fanfic. Yeah, it's not true at all. What, Traverse City, Michigan isn't true. No, no, that's true. But this oh. deck, I do not believe, was made in. I'm pretty sure it's a Traverse oh, the It's Uvenvold. Traverse the Ulvenvold, yeah. But yeah, it's a four color. As far as I can tell, only four color. Uh, Death Shadow deck. Yay! Moving on. Is uh, it only four? I mean, I didn't see white. Is there white? Yeah. Lingering Souls. Where's Lingering um, Souls? And the oh, board. It's in the board. Well, I mean, just... I guess you could just chuck it and flash it back, but yeah, then like... You, you just discard that. That's fine. <laughs> the way that they identify extra colors, I think this would be five by Star City standards. Good thing we're on the WotC site where they don't name things. That's yeah, true. Yeah. And then rounding out the top eight, uh, Andrea Mangucci is here with the other five color humans deck. Yep, he left out purple. This one is running uh uh Kytheon or Kithion. Kittyon. Kittyon. As opposed to the uh Kessig Malcontents, but other than that it's relatively pretty much the same. Hercules. <clears throat> so there you go. That is your, your top eight. Huzzah! If you want to see even more, there are all so, kinds of deck lists. And wait, I'm pretty sure that we need to ban something from five color humans. Uh, yeah, probably just one of the five color. I lands. mean, it's got it's got twice as many decks as any of the other ones in the top eight. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> let's go with Aether Vial. That'll not upset anyone else. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that that won't have any reverberations in the rest of uh, the rest of the modern meta. I mean, it's also the top of the meta. Clearly, it needs to. <sighs> anyway, but it's an artifact. We can't hurt those. And as, as, <laughs> as we said, if you want to see even more, uh, Frank Carson has a day one meta game breakdown that is very uh, thorough. And then a day two metagame breakdown that breaks, well, it breaks down even further into which aggro decks made it to day two. Big mana decks, black mid-range decks, which cover things like Grixis Shadow, the Mardu Pyromancer, uh, Jund, things like that, Abzan. Uh, blue control decks, of which there are several varieties. Bantam. Uh, combo decks, of which there are several varieties. And prison decks, which include the red green land destruction deck and the green white turbo land deck. And then there's another entire section of singletons where there there's just the one. Yeah. So by all means, check all this out. There's at this point there's so much information that there's not much that we can say on an audio podcast because it it's everywhere. Like okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell you what. We'll do like the top however many from day one five color humans affinity burn tron burn. burn tron and this is a specific type of tron because further down there's eldrazi tron so i guess this is eldrazi less tron uh grixis shadow eldrazi tron just guy control blue red gifts storm and white blue control each of those had over 20 people playing them if you want to keep going till you get down to less than 10, you've got Dredge, Titan Shift, Devoted Company, Mardu Pyromancer, Traverse Shadow, and Abzan. And there's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then a whole mess of uh, decks where less than 5 people were playing them. Like, the modern is so wide open. <laughs> and if you want to go to day 2 and talk about what converted well... The humans, the affinity, the burn, bogles, the hollow one decks. Uh, oh yeah, there were six people playing hollow one decks. 
five of which made it to day two, and the one that didn't was the red green variety. Red green, black green, black green. Hang on, hollow one. Oh, it was red green. Oh, weird. All right, because they were playing the the monkeys instead of the zombie fish. Right, I remember now. Excuse me. But there's, there's there's so much data here, you guys. Just I'm sure if you have any interest in modern, you've already looked. If not, links are in the show notes. For God's sake, go check it out. Because Frank Karsten loves his stats. And is doing a fine job at them, too. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, also, I have been told that even though... Uh, what's it called? Lantern Control is miserable to play with, it's miserable to play against, and it's miserable to watch. I've had lots of people tell me that I should watch the finals. So, you know, take that with whatever grain of salt you will. All right, then. Yeah. So, okay, then. That was an admittedly abbreviated look at the modern Pro Tour, but, I mean, what what else do you want? No, really, what else do you want? Also, bear in mind that it's a mixed format tournament because it's modern and also limited with uh, drafts. So that's why they have the deck lists uh, separated by number of points. Like you can do the HTML thing where at the top you have just the the, li- the lists with a little link, and the link will you click on it and it'll drop you down to that part of the list. But instead, we have five different articles. I don't know, whatever. Clickbait. Yeah, I guess. Do they get paid? There aren't ads. Like, what the hell? <laughs> are there not ads? I don't know. I have had blocker. I mean, the only ads are for other magic things that... Clickbait. ...they put there, so I don't think that counts. Chewy, I once opened a pack of magic. You know what I found in there? An ad. <laughs> oh, man. Really? Yeah. You're telling me they're putting ads in loot boxes now? <laughs> It's pretty rough. Like, they were talking about some movie I wasn't going to watch. <laughs> Actually, no. It was a Todd ad. Uh, pretty, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that would make it better. I'm pretty sure I did see that movie. So, there was another thing that was revealed at the... One uh, more thing. At the Pro Tour. Or at least during the Pro Tour. Everybody look under your chairs. Ah, feet. <laughs> okay i'm done laughing now i can unmute so <sighs> that caught me way off guard but anyway anyway so actually this was right before or no this was during because this went up on friday anyway it doesn't matter uh they've shown us the packaging for masters 25 Dun, dun, dun. So Masters 25 is going to be the master set that everyone thought Iconic Masters would be based on the name. It's uh, it's a master set that covers all 25 years of Magic with at least one card from each of the major releases in those 25 years. I wonder what so the card will like be. It's like M20, but more. I wonder what the card will be from the dark. Probably Ball Lightning. Probably. But uh, they also, since they showed us the packaging, we have art here. What, wasn't there, uh, was it Elves of Dark Shadow? That, that was, was, was that Was that dark? from the dark? Elves of Dark Shadow. Pirates of Dark Water? Yes, Pirates of Dark Water. I think that was Excellent, from the dark. excellent, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Elves of Dark Shadow was, yeah, that was also from the dark. So that Yeah, there you go. That's going to be the card, yeah. And yeah. also Tailspin. I just really like to tell Tailspin. Anyway, that was close to... Uh-huh. <laughs> that was close to Tailspin's music, I forget. I mean, you were close enough to not get pulled from YouTube. So oh, good job. We, eh. <laughs> oh, we oh, oh. We, oh. Anyway, anyway, so yes, it is. they have revealed any that... Any whoa, any whoa. Shut up. That Jace the Mind Sculptor <laughs> and Azusa Lost But Seeking will be reprinted. And there's a third yes. thing here. That people seem to think is Platinum Imperion. Platinum Imperion. Could be. I know it had a different artwork, but I can't remember. Oh, wait. If I go to magiccards.info. Aha. And go Platinum. 
Oh, this doesn't show me. Really? Maybe Platinum Empyrean didn't get another printing somewhere. I thought it did. Like a judge foil or something? Seems like it has, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, here's what I can tell you. Some wild speculation. Can I can I speculate wildly? Is that a thing we can do on the show? Is sure. that okay? Why, why not? As long as you point out that you're speculating wildly, then we're good. Okay. Okay. It's still wild speculation. That's probably totally true. First one is, okay, since we can clearly see, and they have clearly said, Jace the Mind Sculptor is in this. As soon as this is released, there will immediately be a uh, a, a, re a press release about bannings in Masters 25 Limited, Jace is banned. <laughs> As part of the 25-year magic experience. That's right. Ironically, at that time, Jace will be unbanned in Modern. Also, because they are going to feature some cards from uh, Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited in here, because they say that as well, I'm calling it now, this set is going to mark the end of the reserved list. <laughs> it, it, it's not. I want to be clear about that. That's <laughs> stupid. That's not going to happen. But that's so what's going to be clear. Happen. That's stupid. <laughs> yeah. But that's what's, that's what's going to happen. Even though it's dumb and won't happen. That's what's going to happen. Nice. Oh, yeah. They also pointed out that Azusa has the Kamigawa watermark in her text box. And it says, nearly every card in Masters 25 will have this treatment. You also notice that Jace the Mind Sculptor does not. So I guess that's, that's why they That's because he's here. banned. Yeah. I yeah. mean, clearly. He's been banned just from the set in general. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. I don't know why people think that's Platinum Imperion, but I've seen that in multiple places from uh -uh. multiple different people. It could just be, like, Hive Mind. Someone said it once and it spread. Wait, Probably. they're reprinting Hive Mind? I hate you. I mean, it could be any number of things like it's generic in that cylon got too close to super shredder kind of way a little bit yeah <laughs> like i don't know man um <laughs> i mean i can see the platinum imperium argument just because of the design of its arms and stuff but yeah we'll find out let's not get too excited because really we're, we're not that excited about the platinum imperium right no I, I didn't think so. I mean, it's got that cool combo with Madcap, uh, whatever. Experiment? Madcap? Mad skills? Oh, never mind. Is it Madcap Experiment? Something like that. But other than that, yeah, I don't know. It was never that exciting. No. Anyway, so there is more news from today. Oh, hey, look, it's today. Yay. And that, it, by the way, this is being recorded on the 5th. Hopefully you paid your rent. If you are hearing Ooh, this good, and you didn't pay point. your rent, oh, crap. You should yeah, probably get on that. You should You're probably that. listening to this on the 6th. At the very earliest. Uh, so yeah, today it was announced that Friday Night Magic tokens for promos are going away with Dominaria. Yay. They're going back to actual standard legal sets. Hooray! Or cards, promo cards from standard legal sets, as opposed to the shiny tokens that we've been getting. I like the way that Blake wrote here. It has just a little touch of you people ruin this. While the experiment with special premium tokens was aimed at fostering a fun, inclusive environment for Friday Night Magic, the real, wor the real world results did not match our expectations. <laughs> that, coupled with the community's feedback, led us to change back. Uh, I find that hilarious. Yeah. But apparently, I read somewhere else from someone else official, but I can't remember. I think it was on Twitter. Uh, with the changes they've made to, uh, with the creation of things like play design, they have managed to, coupled with that, they've managed to find a way to pick the cards later in the process <clears throat> so they don't get quite so many, you know, lame, stupid stinkers. Can can I wildly speculate here as well? Sure. So there are, there are two things that I want to talk about, and then I'll get to the actual wild, spec, wild speculation. The first one is, you know how in the, uh, the most recent Unset, uh, Unstable? Yes. Yeah, Unstable. Uh, how they had multiple cards that had more than one printing of the card. Right. You know, there was actually literally more than one version, so more than one text of the card. Right. 
when they did that, there was mention of they toyed around with the idea of having like dozens of combinations of like really cryptic command, but in the end decided that they couldn't quite pull it off. Also, there have been a bunch of, I'm going to call it a rash of complaints about, uh, how can I describe this, inconsistent print quality recently. Both of those things suggest to me that they've been working out new systems for how they actually do the printing of cards, because the implication with the really cryptic command was it was something that they could essentially change on the fly at time of printing, rather than creating like some master sheet that got printed, it could get changed on the fly. I suspect that they have been tinkering with some of the stuff behind the scenes, and that they're lag time between deciding to print a thing and having that thing printed is shorter now than it used to be. And so their ability to swap up what they're going to do for promos has gotten that, that that lag time has gotten much shorter. So I think it's not just from the, the design and development side, but also from the physical real world, we've got to print this thing side that they they're, they're much more, I'm going to say nimble at that now. That but doesn't I make know. sense. Like I said, the the tweet that I saw, I really wish I could remember who said it. Yeah, said, I saw it too, and I can't find okay, it Okay, good. But they said that they found a way to make decisions for what to do promos with later in the process, which totally lends itself to what Clues just said. And also, the creation of play design means they have a better, they will have a better idea of what's good and what's not and how the meta will possibly look possibly. sooner than they previously did without play design. So those two things mean, hey, we might get more better relevant FNM promos. Hey, cool. I mean, whatever, this this doesn't affect me at all. I kind of liked the idea of the premium tokens, but, you know, magic nerds had to complain about things, so whatever. Anyway, that was my wild speculation about this. I don't even know if that was terribly wild. Yeah, it was a little bit wild. It was a little bit wild for me. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say it's because people were eating the tokens and so they're giving them cards again. But they were shiny. <laughs> uh, a Tide commercial. <laughs> it was also a Tide ad. All right, then. So that's that. Uh, yeah. In other news, their, their Rivals of Ixalan survey is up. I just clicked on it and it's still actually up as of the time of this recording. Oh, so if you've paid your rent, go do that. Yeah, yeah. I bring up the rent because I had to remember, oops, I have to pay rent at like three o'clock today. Yeah, I know. This is a good tip, man. Yeah. And then also for those of you interested in the uh, Great Designer Search 3, uh, Mark Rosewater went over the essay questions and went over what he thought they should be. So, you know, if that interests you at all, you've probably seen it already. But if not, hey, you might have missed it. Here you go. The link is in the show notes. I am not keeping up with the Great Designer Search 3 in the slightest, so I haven't read it, so I'm not going to comment. Although I probably yeah. will actually go read those uh, essay questions and give it a brief thought experiment, if nothing else. I really enjoyed actually answering the questions in the uh, the first Great Designer Search all those years ago. And I like doing it in the second one. I just... Didn't really want to throw in a whole bunch of time to do it in the third one when I knew I wasn't going to actually try to get the job. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's true. And that looks like that's it for uh, news. Ta-da! Pretty much. I really need to go back and watch some of the, the top eight from this because seriously, like, everyone was telling me that uh, the top eight of the Pro Tour was just insane. So. Excellent. Well, I don't really have too much for Magic Online, so I'll just jump into it. Like usual, the Magic Online news is mostly a rundown of events that happened last weekend that you've already missed. You know, like during the Pro Tour, they also had the online um, Pro Tour qualifier stuff, so that's fun. But that's already happened. Um, if you want to keep current on this stuff, go to the Wizards website, go to Products, then Magic Online. And on Tuesdays, they'll post the actual rundown of current week news. My stuff's a week old, so most of it's bad. Slash old slash irrelevant. Um, the only thing I really wanted to point out this week, though, is that if you filled out a full set of Amonkhet and 
regular or premium cards online and you want to redeem those, well, they haven't had them for a while, but they're going to be adding them to the um, Magic Online store for redemption starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday the 7th. And as such, you probably want to jump in and get those pretty much immediately because they're only going to be available for a week or while supplies last. So if you're looking to cash out your digital cards for some paper ones, specifically for the Amonkhet set, uh, get on that while you can. Um, beyond that, I really don't have a whole lot. Uh, the new set came out a few weeks ago. It's still on there. And keep an eye on the website for more news. Generally pretty quiet immediately following a new set, so don't be surprised if this continues for a few more weeks. Ooh, you think they'll do a modern Pro Tour gauntlet? Uh, probably eventually. I mean, they usually do. I just don't see an announcement for one yet. They'll probably post that in tomorrow's news. So keep an eye out for it. They usually try to do a Pro Tour gauntlet a week later. So one might be announced tomorrow that will be happening Wednesday and will be almost gone by the time I talk about it next week. So if you want to jump in on that, maybe pay attention. Yeah. And hey, you too can. Oh, uh, yeah. What? I was going to say that you too can enjoy the wonder slash horror of playing the Magic Online version of the Lantern Control deck and see for yourself whether or not it deserves all the hate. <laughs> I would also like to point out that I have been making fun of the Lantern Control deck for, I don't know, I'm going to say at least months now, uh, calling people, you know, monsters and whatnot, but that's irrelevant to whether or not I think anything in the deck should be banned before. I'm sure people have already tweeted at me and called me out. You've been calling those people monsters that hate fun for like ever now. True. And that's because I'm pretty sure it is miserable to play against, but I also value my lunch time and be like, well, you win. And then I would go eat lunch. But you know, whether or not I like it is irrelevant. So yeah, continue shutting up now clues. I see in our yeah. chat that you have discovered a thing. Uh, yes, I did. That that tweet that we both hallucinated, that we actually didn't both hallucinate. So, uh, I will drop a link to this in the show notes, question mark? I already did. Okay, great. Uh, so, earlier today, Sam Stoddard on Twitter said, and I quote, One of the changes to FNM Promo's process internally was figuring out how to choose them later in the process. Combined with many of the play design changes, it should lead to more Tier 1 cards and fewer misses. So, there you go. Yay! Straight from Watsy staff themselves, that's the idea. So, like I said, this kind of fueled my speculation about behind-the-scenes changes. Seems good. All right, then. Well, it looks like that's it for us, then. Awesome. So, somebody want to go? Yeah, that's usually me. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at Squee Goblin to Bob. There's no I in Goblin because, as mentioned earlier in the show, it was banned in modern. Um, so sorry, I. Um, past that, I'm not going to any cons or anything anytime soon. And, but hopefully I will stop being sick soon. No, what, what I'm looking forward to instead is getting past being sick, um, playing the Overwatch uh, Chinese New Year event starting this Friday. I think it starts Thursday, but I'll be playing it on Friday. Yeah. Um, That'll be fun. You can ask Chewie where to find that in a minute. Um, and then next week, I'm looking forward to seeing Black Panther, which apparently you should go buy your tickets for now because people are treating it like it's a Star Wars movie. Um, Ooh, really? Yeah, like all the advanced reviews are really positive. And like I was just going to casually like check the Fandango listings for my theaters with reserved seats so we could get a good one now. Most of them have you sitting at the front if you're going on the opening Thursday night. So be aware of that. Um, I like to see Marvel movies on the Thursday night before the internet can meme all the surprises out of things. So I'll probably see it at some point that Thursday night. I might just have to actually look around a bit, but looking forward to it. I recently rewatched civil war so that I could get back in the mindset because as it turns out, Aside from, like, Spider-Man and Iron Man being in Homecoming, we haven't seen any of these characters since that movie. Wow, uh, right. Yeah. Is we it haven't still seen... on Netflix? It is. Okay. Civil War is still on Netflix if you want to jump in on that. Good, good, good. Yeah. Like, I just rewatched it yesterday, and it's still good. The font on all of the locations is still ridiculously giant. So that you know you're in, not London, but London! 
and so on and so forth. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Just giant Russia, <laughs> just in case you don't know. Um, it, they're still well in your face, uh, but it, it was good on the rewatch, obviously. And it was nice to get back in the mindset of, you know, Black Panther and the setting that we're going into and also the world that we're going into. Because since then, we had, um, you know, Guardians movies, Doctor Strange, which isn't tied into any of this stuff really yet. Um, Spider-Man, like I said, touched on it a little bit, but by and large, like we haven't really touched that world since that movie. And so I'm looking forward to seeing it. And then of course, obviously in a few months, we get the wonders of watching the actual, um, Infinity War movie, but I'm also looking forward to the end of March when they hit me with the giant wall of fan service. That's going to be ready player one. I don't care that everyone's telling me that the movie is probably going to be badly written. No one showed up for the script. We are not here for that. Correct. I am here because I get to watch Battletoads run out flanked by the RX-78 Gundam. And there's going to be Tron motorcycles. There's going to be everything. It's going to be great. The Iron Giant. And the Tracer. Iron Giant. Like, I don't expect Tracer to do a whole lot, but I am appreciating the no, density she's in of the background. in this movie. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. Um, I'm looking forward to all this nonsense. It's going to be a fun movie. I could care less. Like, you could have the worst writing in the world. If it's two hours of me digging through Easter eggs, that's kind of what I watch in movies anyway. So, we'll see where it goes. But we have a good year of movies coming up, so I'm looking forward to all of it. And now I'll pass it over to The Clues. All right, I'm looking forward to many of those same movies, to be honest with you. Um, so, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go see those too, and then we'll, we'll talk about them. Probably in the odds and ends, which you folks should probably listen to. Chewie's going to tell you all about that in just a minute or two, if you don't know what that is. If you're new here, welcome aboard. It is usually just this, this high-quality, in-depth reporting. We never go on rambling about things for far too long, ever. And there's like, never wild speculation. It's never. No, that's totally unprecedented in the history of this podcast, to be honest with you, but... There it is. Hey, if you want to hear more from me, you can find me over on the other podcast that I do. That is called Random Discard. It is found at randomdiscard.com, also right here on the MTGcast network. So uh, you can you can find it there. Uh, our most recent episode that is out, uh, Rich, my co-host, and I discussed uh, some, some Star Wars movies that you might have seen recently. Um, we had a jolly good time. I, I recommend uh, both those movies and listening to our podcast about it. If you want to reach me directly, your best bet is the Twitters. I am at Lockluze, spelled just like it is in the show notes. Oh, by the way, this show has notes. You should go check those out. Links to some of the things we've talked about will be found there. In fact, also, all of the things. Also, how to spell Lockluze. That's that's there. So there you go. Take it away, Chewy. L a c l u y z e. That is correct. <laughs> I did that without looking. I am proud of me for that. <laughs> I am proud of you, too. Uh, yes, hello, I am Chewy. You can find me on my other podcast, which I realized while on both of my podcasts, I always mention, you know, YouTube and Twitch and all that. I very rarely mention the other podcast on each show. <laughs> so you can find me also on the Manipool podcast, where we talk about all of the things magic that have nothing to do with like the, the tournament side of things on the last episode that went out, we looked at homelands and cold snap and tried to determine which, if any cards from them would have been mythic. If mythic rarity was a thing at the time, that's a segment we do periodically called mythic conscription. And on the episode before that, we talked about friendly casual play groups enacting friendly bans on certain cards or strategies or you banning yourself from playing cards or strategies because of various reasons the most prevalent of which from all of our anecdotes were it sucked the fun out of the game for everyone else so yeah if either of those sound interesting we have uh almost 500 episodes of us talking about all kinds of stuff like that so feel free to check it out you can find it at themanapool.com. Yay. I also have a YouTube channel where I do the Let's Play thing, for the most part. At the moment, I'm playing Cuphead, 
and uh, lots of Hearthstone. Also, if I can ever get the damn thing rendered, I've worked on it for like six and a half hours today. Uh, Hearthstone has announced updates, balance changes, nerfs, whatever you want to call it. And my Mana Pool co-host Mike and I got together and recorded a nerf report explaining what was being changed and why and how it made us feel and the effect it'll have on decks and things like that. And also talking about the changes they're going to make to the uh, ladder system in Hearthstone that I've been working on since January 30th, off and on. And I finally finished it today and then ran into technical difficulties trying to turn it into an actual video. It's a large pain, but it'll be done very soon, hopefully up uh, tomorrow or the next day. So yay! Very excited to finally be done with that freaking video. Also... I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the Manipool. The, the YouTube channel is the Manipool as well. Twitch channel is the Manipool. That's, that's where you'll find me. Where I play lots of things, most notably Blizzard games on Twitch. For some reason, I play lots of Hearthstone and lots of Overwatch. But I also play other stuff. Random indie games. Uh, the Slime Rancher is another thing I need to get back to. I really need to go back and finish The Walking Dead, which I realized a few days ago that I never did ever. And that makes me sad. So yeah, lots of stuff going on over there. It's twitch.tv slash themanipool. And if you want to help support what I do with these two podcasts a week and YouTube videos and Twitch streams and all that, then you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash themanipool where every little bit helps. And I really do appreciate it. Also, Bill mentioned the Overwatch event. On Friday, we're going to be streaming whatever the new... Uh, event is in Overwatch. It comes out apparently on Thursday, but I record the Mana Pool on Thursday nights, so we can't stream it then. So we're going to stream Friday night. It's going to be awesome. Right, Bill? He's muted. Just assume he said right, and it was kind of nasally. Yeah! Like that. <laughs> we can still do that somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds better Blues when you're sick. So, uh... Back to the Patreon, if you want, you can get early stuff. That's Manipool episodes and YouTube videos early. You can get the odds and ends along with the early stuff. That's all the stuff recorded before and after both Monday Night Magic and the Manipool, and it's uncensored and unfiltered, and it's just us generally being more us. I only edit for personal information that somehow gets out because somebody forgot we were recording. And also... You can get the early stuff, the odds and ends, and if you are feeling exceptionally generous, you can become a lifeguard, and your name will go up on the end slate of all the videos that go up in each month that you support at that tier, and you will get a shout-out on both podcasts. So to that end, I would like to thank the following people. Oh, God, some of these people didn't get back to me on how to pronounce their name. Uh, uh, <laughs> I would like to thank the following lifeguards. Become a lifeguard at the Mana Pool. Get it? It's funny. Thanks to Kim Ho, Andrew Hunt, Al, uh, Corey, I still can't pronounce your last name, Applecork. We'll just call you Applecork because that's where you are all over the internet. Paul David, Lands Delicious, Tim Yu, Hellas Haru, John Morris, Stewart's Law, PJ McMullen, Bosco Bertain, Casey, Nathan Hay, Denny Liao. I hope I said that right. AJ Javieras, Cody Buckowing, Jacob Jansons, Jason Kaus, Brian DeLucci, Stark Maximum, Jimmy Scott, Dan Holm, Mike Miller Burned, and the Beast Father, Aaron Goodwine. Thank you all so incredibly much for your generosity. I uh, quite literally could not do it without you. It's so great. At the beginning of every month, I have to redo the inslate, you know, if I had changes to the, uh, the lifeguard tier. And I keep having to use a smaller and smaller and smaller font. And it feels good, man. <laughs> you know, because there are so many names. It has to fit on the screen. My mom thinks I'm funny. Anyway. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Speaking of funny, the Eli Manning, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. final commercial in the, uh, in the series during the Super Bowl actually made mom laugh so hard that something broke. You know the one I'm talking about, Bill? Um, not sure that I do. The the dirty dancing thing? Ah, uh, yes, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so mom 
like really needs to go to the doctor. She's like, I've been, they couldn't find anything. I'm like, you, you tell them to look harder. Cause she was laughing really hard. And then suddenly she grabbed her side, like where her appendix was like literally decades and decades and decades ago. And almost started to cry. That's how funny those commercials were. They hurt my mom. <laughs> she's, she's fine. She's fine. Everybody calm down. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I just thought I'd share that for absolutely no reason. You'll get more things like that on the odds and ends. <laughs> so, this has been episode 593 of Monday Night Magic here on the MTG Cast Network. A big thanks, as always, to Clues and Squee for joining me. But of course. And thank you all so very much for listening, and uh, go play some magic. Yeah.